The Association of Medical Consultants Mumbai is bringing to you this demonstration on basic first aid. I'm Dr. Shitija Rao and with my colleagues Dr. Anand Parihar and Dr. Mandakini Parihar, we will be showing you simple methods to deal with accidents that occur in and around the house, in school and frequently on school picnics when a doctor is far away and medical help will take some time to arrive. Now the basic principle of first aid is be safe yourself, do not panic and treat the victim only till a doctor or medical person arrives. First aid does not replace medical treatment. It is only the help given to prevent a simple accident from becoming a complicated one. Some of the topics that we will include today are fainting and unconsciousness, fractures and sprains, animal bites, nosebleeds, injuries to the eye, choking and other outdoor accidents like heat stroke, snake bites, bee stings which commonly occur when you are on picnics. One of the most common problems is fainting and unconsciousness. Now let me show you a simple and effective way to deal with this. The worst thing to do is to crowd around a fainted person. Give them fresh air to breathe so that there is enough air circulating around them. The reason a person faints is due to less of blood reaching the brain. So what do we do? We lift the legs so that all the blood that is collected in the legs which is usually more than 50% rushes to the brain and the person starts feeling better immediately. In case this does not happen and the person is still unconscious, we have to turn them to a safe position which is called the recovery position. Turn the patient on the left side, bend the legs and hold the person in that position till they wake up or a doctor arrives. The advantage of this position is that the tongue does not fall back and block the windpipe. And in case the person happens to vomit in an unconscious state, the vomit does not enter the windpipe and choke the person to death. Another common problem we come across while playing at home or while bursting crackers, especially during Diwali, is that of burns. Let us show you how to deal with a simple burn while at home. This is a common scenario. The best thing to do when you have got burnt is to hold the burn part under running water at least for 15 minutes. Not 1 minute, not 2 minutes, but 15 whole minutes. This will prevent the heat from going into deeper tissues and from making a simple burn into a deep complicated burn. So to prevent complications related to burns, you must hold the burnt part in water for 15 minutes. If your whole body has caught fire like in an explosion, then the best thing to do is to go and stand under the shower or sit under a tap for 15 to 20 minutes. This is a single most effective treatment for burns and is more important than anything else you have learnt in the past. You must not wrap the burnt part in a blanket or in any kind of bandage or put any ointment or creams as this would trap the heat inside and will damage the deeper tissues under the skin. Let us now talk about what to do when the room catches fire. Unfortunately, fire evokes great fear in our hearts and whenever we see fire, the first thing we do is panic. You must remember to keep a calm and composed mind. If the room has caught fire, make sure that you shut the doors of the room so that it does not spread to the other rooms. Activate a fire alarm if present and inform as many people as possible that a fire has broken out in the room. Now because fire and smoke are light, they rise to the top of the room. 
So as you're trying to run out of the room, your vision may get blocked because of the smoke. And when you inhale the smoke, you may have a fit of coughing and it will enter your lungs and cause problems. So when a room catches fire, the best thing to do is to tie a handkerchief around your uh, nose, wet it if possible, and crawl out from the bottom of the room. This way, you will prevent your eyes and your lungs from being affected by the smoke. Another common injury that we see among school children is that of fractures and sprains. Now, what is a fracture? A fracture happens when two bones or a single bone breaks. It is called a sprain when ligaments are torn. But basically, this difference can be found only on x-rays or by a doctor. So the best way is to treat an injury related to a bone or a joint in the same way, whether it is a fracture or a sprain, till a doctor decides what needs to be done. Why is there so much pain in a fracture? Pain occurs due to the abnormal position of the bones and the bones rubbing against each other. So the important thing is to make sure that the limb is held absolutely steady. We must remember these four alphabets R, I, C, E, RICE. R stands for rest. I stands for ice. Invariably, there is always a swelling when there is a sprain or a fracture. Applying ice on the sprained part will prevent swelling from increasing further and will also reduce the pain immediately. If there has been a cut along with the sprain, then we can put a compression bandage to prevent the increasing of bleeding. That is C. E stands for elevation. Keep the affected limb elevated so that because of gravity, the blood goes back and the pain is reduced considerably. So the simple principle is, R I C E rice rest ice compression and elevation this does not mean that you don't have to take the patient to a doctor as soon as it's possible take him to a doctor for an x-ray and further treatment for an upper limb fracture or a sprain the principle is the same as we follow the principle of rice rest make the patient rest comfortably Put some ice on the swollen part. This reduces the pain immediately and prevents the swelling from getting worse. You can also now support the broken bone with a simple rolled up newspaper and a dupatta or a large handkerchief can be used to tie it around and support it. This prevents the bones from rubbing against each other and causing pain. You will be surprised to see how the simple act of holding it in position reduces the pain by almost 80%. After you have done that, keep the injured hand elevated and send the patient to the doctor so that an x-ray can be taken to find out the severity of the injury. Now we come to the problem of cuts and wounds. This is common in every house. Most of the time, children are careless while cutting something and they land up in a deep cut and a lot of blood and injuring their hands. Ouch! It's a deep cut! Once a cut has taken place or there is a wound, make sure that it is washed thoroughly with water and soap, especially if the wound has taken place outdoors and it is contaminated with a lot of mud and dirt it is very important to wash it thoroughly before putting any kind of bandage on it. Once the wound has been thoroughly washed with water, elevate the injured part, tie a clean handkerchief around it and hold it tightly. This will prevent it from further bleeding. If you find that in spite of this first handkerchief is still getting covered with blood, do not make the mistake of removing it to see what is happening. Because if a clot is forming, then that would disturb the clot and there would be fresh bleeding. 
Take another handkerchief and tie it over the first one and hold that tightly in place. If it's a small minor cut, this much should be enough. If you find that the bleeding continues, then you may need to suture it or stitch it up at a hospital and you must take the person to a hospital immediately before the blood loss becomes dangerous to the health of the patient. In cold and dry weather, my nose bleeds very often. When it is very hot, my nose bleeds. The simple and most effective way to deal with nose bleeds is pinch the tip of the nose, lean forward and breathe through the mouth. This is effective and useful if done for 10 whole minutes. You must not lose your patience and let go easily. Continue breathing deeply from the mouth. If you feel the bleeding is still very severe, hold a handkerchief filled with ice over the forehead and not the tip of the nose because the main blood vessel that comes to the nose comes through the forehead. And if you put ice on the forehead, that should stop the bleeding effectively and quickly. Nose bleeds are not a reason to panic, but if they occur very often, more than two to three times a month, then you must see a doctor and find out the reason. We are often told by our parents and teachers not to eat, talk and laugh at the same time. Why is it so important to remember this? When you eat, the food goes into your food pipe. When you talk and laugh loudly, your windpipe is also open. So if you have food in your mouth, at the same time your food gets confused, where do I go? The food pipe or windpipe? And sometimes by chance the food goes into the windpipe, that is what we call as choking. The victim who is choking will be unable to tell you that he is choking and unable to breathe. You have to be able to recognize the signs that he is gasping for air. What do you do? Hit him hard between the shoulder blades. That should be enough to get the food out of the windpipe. If that is not successful, hold him tightly from behind, make him lean forward and give a sharp upward tug towards yourself. That should get the food out and save his life. While playing with wires which are live, you can get a serious electric shock. The first reaction is to try and help your friend. What you must do is to try and find rubber slippers and wear them. Hold a wooden piece and try to get your friend away from the wire by removing him with the help of the wooden piece. But remember, this is not the end. As soon as he falls away from the wire, take him to the hospital to check that there are no internal injuries. Stray dogs are a common problem especially in cities and dog bites by stray dogs can be sometimes dangerous. The most common thing to do is remember, do not dress the wound. Washing with a simple soap and water will remove 85% of the virus. Once the wound has been cleaned, immediately see that the person is taken to a doctor and preventive vaccination is being given. The old way of giving 14 injections in the stomach is no longer to be followed because we have newer medications which are in the form of 7 days of vaccination to be taken in the arm or the leg. Rabies is a deadly disease and it cannot be cured. It can only be prevented and therefore vaccination when you are bitten by a stray dog is an absolute mandatory system that has to be followed. If you have sweated a lot and not have enough water to drink, then the signs and symptoms of a heat stroke set in. The first signs are feeling giddy, feeling like vomiting, Eventually, you will fall to the ground semi-conscious. What should be done is immediately take the victim to a shaded area, preferably out of the sun, into a room. Put the fan on and see that he is lying down directly under the fan. Loosen his clothing 
if possible remove his clothing so that his body is exposed to the cool air if he is conscious give him a glass of water to sip slowly you must not put ice on the body as the sudden change in temperature will do more harm than good after seeing the short film on first aid i'm sure each one of you now will have the confidence to deal with any emergency situation that arises at home or in school remember first aid saves lives and if you ever see a victim of an accident don't ignore don't walk away because your timely help could save a life i would like to thank ace medinet hospital services for making this film possible and for giving us invaluable support and advice during the filming